Hi, this is James Ward, a platform evangelist at Salesforce. I want to walk you through a quick demonstration for how to get started using the Salesforce REST APIs using a Node.js application and Heroku. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the QuickForce Node repository on my GitHub. And this will give you some instructions for what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is actually just deploy this application on Heroku. So what I'm going to do is click that, and then this will walk me through the deployment of this application. And all I really have to do is just click Deploy for Free. And now this will take that Node.js application and build it and deploy it on the cloud. And one of the reasons that I'm starting with the cloud is because usually when we're working with the Salesforce REST APIs, we want to have the application deployed somewhere, and Heroku is a great place to do that. So it looks like the application is just about done being built, and there it is. We'll be able to now launch it. And when we launch it, you'll see that we get a new domain name, and it's taken us to a setup page where we're going to follow some instructions for how we set up this application to run on Heroku and connect to Salesforce. So the first thing we need to do is create a new connected app in Salesforce. So I'm just going to open up that link. It's going to go into Salesforce setup, and I can just give this any name there and put in my email. And then I'm going to enable the OAuth settings. And now I need to enter these callback URLs. I can just copy and paste these from the setup instructions, specify the OAuth scopes that I want, and then hit save. When I hit save, it's going to tell me that it's going to take a couple minutes to complete the setup of this new connected app. And so we may have to uh, pause for a minute once we get there if it's not, if it does take indeed a couple minutes. Okay, so now that I've created my new connected app, let's go back to the instructions. And we'll say that uh, I need to take the consumer key and consumer secret, and I need to plug those into my app's settings on Heroku. So I'm going to open up my app settings, and we'll see in my app settings there's a place to reveal our config bars. I don't currently have any, and what I need to do is plug those in here. So I'm going to have one called consumer key and then the value of that is going to be this value here and put that in the value and then hit add and then I'm going to do the same thing for the consumer secret and this should always remain a secret and protected so don't ever show anyone like I'm doing now your consumer secret I'll make sure I go delete that after I'm done recording this demo. Okay, so now that I have that consumer key and consumer secret set in the Heroku application, let's just go hit refresh on this page and you'll see that I do get an error and that's indicating to me that this connected application is not finished being set up yet and so we're going to have to wait that two to five minutes. So I'll just fast forward through that and be back in a second. All right, let's give this a try again by just refreshing this page. Okay, great. So it looks like that's been set up. And now it's asking me, do I want to allow the app Foo access to those things? And I'm going to say allow. So now that I've gone through the OAuth authorization, it's redirecting me back to my app on Heroku. That app has done a REST query out to Salesforce and pulled in the, the data from Salesforce from my account and is rendering that there. Okay, so now that we have this all up and running on the cloud, the next step is to get a local development environment up and running with this Node.js application so I can work on this locally. That allowed me to have much quicker iterations when I'm developing on this application. There's a few different ways to do that. You can use the traditional Git tooling, uh, and then you can also do something that doesn't require any command line. So I'm going to walk through that. To do that, I'm going to go to a little site called, actually, if we go back to the instructions, and you can see the URL in here, it's downloadherokusource.herokuapp.com. And this is just a simple little Heroku app that will download the source code for this application that I'm working on. This will just download it as a zip file, and then we'll be able to launch the Node.js application. And this won't require anything. So uh, you may have noticed a quick little redirect to Heroku. That's because this application is using Heroku OAuth and the Heroku APIs to be able to do this. But now we see here's a link to the application I'm working on, the Peaceful Beach one. Once I click that link, it's now going to download the source code for this application. 
So this is just a quick and easy way to get my source code off of Heroku. So it'll take a second to down, finish downloading that. And while it's doing that, let's go into Finder and it's going to put that in my downloads directory. So let's go find my downloads directory. And there we go, there's my uh, zip file. So I'm just going to extract this zip file out. So now we get a directory with everything that I need to get this application up and running locally. This is using Node.js and Gulp, a build tool for Node.js. So what I'm going to do is just launch Gulp from the file explorer. You could also, of course, use the command line if you prefer. This will bootstrap the entire Node.js environment and a code editor that I can use as well. So it's going to take a minute the first time this runs to download all the Node.js dependencies. So that's Node, all the dependencies for the application, and then it will also download Atom. So you really have to have nothing on your system in order to do this uh, to get started with this application running locally. It will bootstrap your entire development environment for you. So it's going to take a minute for that to run. So again, I'll fast forward through this until it's complete. Okay, so it looks like everything has been fetched and it's uh, going to start up Atom. It's also started up the Node application, so I need to allow that on Mac to, to open that network port. And then we should have our Atom code editor here up and running in just a sec. So there we go. This is our Atom code editor, and you'll see that it's popped up in the README file with those instructions that we've been following. So we've done this step four where we've unzipped the archive and we've launched Gulp and that launched Atom and the Node server. So now we should be able to open up the local running application in our browser and then set, set up that application locally. So what we're seeing is uh, we need to set up OAuth for my local running application now. And so to do that I need to create a new file in my source directory that will provide the consumer key and consumer secret values at over to uh, my node application. So to do that I'm just going to come in here and create a new file and then we're going to copy and paste that in there and then I need to put in my consumer key and consumer secret again. So let's go back to our connected app and again we'll copy and paste this. All the setup we just have to do the first time and, uh, and then after that it's all quick and easy. So copy that consumer secret there there we go. And now when I save this, I'm going to name it .env, as the instructions said. So great. So now we have our env file telling our local Node.js application about the consumer key and consumer secret OAuth settings. So now I can go to my local running app, which is the localhost 5001, and I can just refresh this page. You'll see that it went through that quick OAuth exchange there, and now we're seeing the app running locally. So that's great. I have my local environment all bootstrapped and up and running now. And so the next step will be to make a quick change to this application and then redeploy that change out to the cloud on, uh, with Heroku. So let's go over to Atom and go explore the source code. From the top, there's a views directory that contains some handlebars, templating files, then I have the app.js, which is just the main application here. You'll see that the code is handling GET requests, it's doing the OAuth, and then once we're authenticating, it's doing a SQL query on account, and then using that index handlebars template to render our records. you see there's also a page in here for the setup instructions. Also in here is a couple other files. There's the gulp files, which you don't really need to pay attention to. The package.json, which contains the node dependency information. So you see I'm using Express for handling the web requests, handlebars for templating, and the Enforce library for connecting to your Salesforce. Okay, so let's go make a quick little change. What I'm going to do is let's just remove the rating column from this app. I'm going to remove it from the query, and then I'm also going to remove it from the handlebars template. And then I just need to save all these files. So I've saved them. Now if we go back to our browser, refresh this page, then it's, you'll see that we, sure enough, we've made that change, and the ratings column is now gone. Great, so that's the change that I wanted to make, pretty simple one, but now let's redeploy this change out to Heroku. So I can do that from Atom, so again I don't have to use the command line, I certainly can if I want to use uh, Git and the, that kind of tooling from the command line, but when uh, the 
the tooling here installed Atom. It also installed an Atom plugin for talking to Heroku. So there's a Heroku menu up in Atom, and I've already logged in, so I don't need to, to re-log in. The first time you use it, you will. But then I can just hit this deploy button. It's going to load the list of my Heroku apps, and it looks like I'm actually logged in as the wrong Heroku user. So let's actually do that login again. And so now I'm going to log in with my demo account, which is um, j.ward plus demo at salesforce.com. And then my password. And I don't have two-factor authentication enabled on this demo account, but on any production account, you should certainly enable two-factor authentication. Okay, so now that I'm logged in, let's try this deploy again. And you'll see that there we go. Now we see the peaceful beach there. And so I can now click that app and it's uploading my source up to Heroku. And now Heroku is going to rebuild this application and redeploy it. If we go over to the Heroku dashboard and we check out my personal apps here, you'll see that we have that peaceful beach app that I've created. And then if I go to the activity tab, You'll see that a build is in progress. We can view the live build output. Looks like it's almost done and should be launching. There we go, it's all uh, up and running. I can hit this open app here. So this will open, do the OAuth exchange, and now we see, there we go, my changes that I made locally, I made and tested locally, are now uh, deployed onto Heroku and up and running on the cloud. So that's it, that's a full round trip from being able to deploy an application on the cloud that uses the Salesforce REST APIs, pull that down to my local environment, make changes, and then redeploy those changes. If you wanna get started, just go to github.com slash jamesward slash quick dash force dash node uh, to, and then click that deploy to Heroku button and follow the instructions. Let me know if you have any feedback or uh, need any help. Thanks for watching.